Hello everyone, hello guys. Uh, just for an introduction, if you weren't here for the last beginner stream, uh, pretty much what goes on during these is I sit down with you guys, uh, I hop on test server, so keep that in mind, and I kind of walk you through the new player experience of starting out on the reboot server, uh, guiding you through it, explaining some of the systems on a very basic level. Uh, we don't go super in-depth on the mechanics, but I give enough information for you to hopefully understand and not be too confused and overwhelmed by these systems. If you do find any of this information uh, useful or helpful, please do share it with your friends if they're new to Maple or thinking about getting into Maple. And if you have any recommendations for me for topics that you would like to see covered, uh, please let me know. You can send them to me on Discord or something and just send me a message or uh, let us know what we should be covering. And if you haven't seen the first part, it is uploaded and condensed on the YouTube channel, so you can send that to your friends as well. Uh, it's been shortened up and sliced up so you don't have to watch the whole hour uh, VOD. It's been broken down into the important bits of information. So we're just going to be continuing that with today, and I have some new topics for us to go over. Boom. Okay, so we're right on in. Everything's looking good. Perfect. Okay, so where we left off last time, we briefly touched on all, all sorts of things such as link skills, Legion, how upgrading your gear works in terms of flaming it, um, potentials and cubing, uh, star forcing, all that kind of good stuff, uh, and some basic tips for other systems around the game, as well as uh, job skills and when you unlock your different job advancements and stuff like that. And we briefly touched on some little features like the boss menu and the maple guide and whatnot. So where I want to continue today is I want to start off by going over the side buttons, the side icons, because I noticed that is one really important thing that we didn't actually cover right off the bat for new players. And this one is super important because we have all the notifiers on the side here. And I know when I first started Maple, um, I was a bit confused on some of the notifiers until I got used to them. So the first one to go over is the yellow light bulb, which is our uh, daily and weekly quest notifier. This way we can access our daily and weekly quests. Um, there's a abundance of important ones for new players. I feel as if it's not too much to worry about until you start doing your symbol dailies. That's a really, really big one. Um, once you have symbol dailies unlocked, that's 200 plus starting with Arcane River, or Vanishing Journey. Vanishing Journey. Um, then that's when dailies become really important, but there's other, some smaller dailies that aren't always listed in the light bulb here that you can do, especially for reboot players that I want to emphasize that are super, super duper important. So one of which we could talk about here in the dimensional mirror, we touched base on this very lightly last time, um, but some dailies that are really useful for reboot players are Maple Tour for Meso, for, for Mesos, um, for your payouts, and then Ursus for Mesos as well too. This one, you'll get the Mesos on the daily basis as you do them. Or Vanishing Journey, Vanishing Journey. Um, then that's when dailies become really important, but there's other, some smaller dailies that aren't always listed in the light bulb here that you can do, especially for reboot players that I want to emphasize that are super, super duper important. So one of which we could talk about here in the dimensional mirror, we touched base on this very lightly last time, um, but some dailies that are really useful for reboot players are Maple Tour for Meso, for, for Mesos, um, for your payouts, and then Ursus for Mesos as well too. This one, you'll get the Mesos on the daily basis as you do them for your three entries. And then the same with two entries for Monster Park, but Monster Park's for XP. There's also something really useful about Monster Park with the currency. So it gives you a little dialogue when you first enter. There's going to be a shop here, and if you go to special, you can use your Monster Park coins to buy some really useful currencies. The shop in Monster Park can be quite useful. It's a small amount, but stacking numbers, I feel like in any MMO is extremely important. Every little bit matters and every little bit helps. So the Monster Park shop has valuable potions such as gold potions for XP increase, 10% by 30 minutes, uh, blue pots, green pots, red pots. These are extremely useful too, especially when bossing gives yourself some extra damage. Uh, and then green pendant too, which is a very, I feel, easy way to get a hold of a little uh, drop equipment piece. Uh, especially pretty early on in reboot and then damage can as well too but i think the main important things to note here are the consumables and the greed pendant so monster park you can do twice a day um and then same with maple tour and then ursus you'll be able to do three times there are two separate bonus slots for ursus um i don't remember the times off the top of my head i don't want to be wrong too because i usually do the night one um but in the Discord, if you do exclamation mark Ursus, it'll 
give you a command with the, the hot times, and the hot times will give you um, more mesos. So you want to usually do Ursus during those hot times. So those are three really important ones to do. This, this applies to regular server as well, but I feel like for reboot, we definitely want to emphasize that. And then you also have your Legion daily as well too, to get your Legion coins. You want to make sure you're doing that every day, because by doing your Legion daily, you'll have access to your coin shop, which gives you also some really useful XP coupons. Uh, and then for our Legion, Legion shop coupons, we do have the might ones, um, and then the increased XP, these ones are super valuable. These coupons will not stack with the 2x coupons, uh, but they will stack with the MVP coupons, which is super good. Uh, and then we also have luck coupons. Uh, these always get to take on bosses. And then wealth coupons as well, too, for increased mess attainment, which is also super handy for grinding. So Legion Shop is super duper important, and there's also a bunch of other really important stuff in here, uh, including the potential scrolls, the stamps, the craftsman cubes, the flames. Um, just Legion's shop is extremely viable and valuable, so it's important that you're doing that daily for those points every day, for your Legion coins. Uh, and then another one too, uh, is going to be our daily gift. So the daily gift is actually going to be under the yellow star, which I wanted to get to later. Uh, but the yellow star is going to be the event tab, so this is where concurrent events are going to be running. Um, so if you're trying to access them or get daily quests, it's easy to click here. Like, for example, we have the Bug Cat Kapoo event going on. Um, this is where you could get the daily quest from, as well as access to the Night Troop. And the one that's quite familiar with a lot of people is the uh, Fairy Bros, the Golden Giveaway. So if you stay logged in for your duration every day, you'll be able to check in and then get a stamp. And then on weekends, it's doubled. So once you get enough stamps to fill up the row, you're going to get the item at the very end of it. You can also use your golden passes too, so if you miss days, you can use maple points to catch up with golden passes. So this is a great way to get some free stuff, especially for you reboot players. Um, there's usually a pet selection in the very beginning here, and then all sorts of just cosmetic rewards, like we got the, the beauty coupons, the damage skins, um, there's the lucid road in this one. So yeah, always, always check this every day if you're playing, and keep this in mind as there's some really good valuable rewards in here um, that are just free to all players. Another important one we're gonna talk about is bosses. We did briefly mention the just the ability to teleport to different bosses, um, and I really like this update change now too, where it'll tell you if the boss is ready. This is perfect because it also lets you know um, if the boss is even unlocked to begin with, uh, because it'll say ready. And if this is not ready, then you don't have the boss unlocked. Um, and briefly mentioned before, different bosses will have different unlock requirements. Some of them are level based, um, like Zakum and um, Balrog, but other bosses will have quest lines that you have to complete to unlock them. And a lot of times for early game players, these can be really important because they will drop really important accessories and gear for your progression, even if you're super early game, even before 200. If you can take on the boss, that's great. If not, you can ask some friends for some help. I'm sure someone would be happy to help you. Certain bosses are going to have different cooldown timers that are really important to be aware of. As just mentioned, you know, if the boss has ready, the boss is available to kill. And some bosses will have cooldown timers that can be daily or also weekly, and that might change for difficulty. Um, for example, some bosses being hard or chaos could have a weekly timer rather than a hard timer. Whereas bosses with normal or easy could have a daily timer. It's all going to be very different, uh, but there are lists online to explain that difference. But you just need to keep that in mind. Um, and weekly bosses reset on Wednesdays. And then daily bosses, of course, just reset uh, at normal daily reset timer. Along with your other daily quests. The big, big reason to do boss dailies is for the boss crystals. They will drop a crystal that will sell for an amount of mesos for a merchant. So if you open up the menu, the quick move for the collector... Uh, when you get boss drop crystals, you can sell them to the collector here for a good sum of mesos, um, up to 60 per week. And this is really useful, especially on, on Maple, because some of the boss crystals will sell for a large amount. Um, on the wiki, too, it'll show you the prices for the a lot of the boss crystals, or all the boss crystals. Um, so doing daily and weekly bosses, even just for the mesos, and if you're not worried too much about the drops, this is great to do. Okay, so now going through some more of the notifiers. So as mentioned, we have gone through the daily and weekly quests that will pop up in here, and then some of the ones that won't pop up in here, such as like Maple Tour and all that kind of stuff. 
Uh, and then we have the white light bulb. These are gonna be quest lines in here. Some of these are really important for unlocking bosses and certain contents too. So typically I don't go through all of them like in a row. I look up what I need to do and like what's important and then go through the quest lines this way. But this is just gonna be your general section of like where quests will go. And you can even sort it by level range too if you're just looking for things within your range. And then for the star notifier as mentioned too, this is where all the event stuff will pop up too. For ongoing events that are concurrent, daily quests, things like that that are important to it. So always keep an eye on this. And then for Maple Reward Points with 227, there was a super good KOL change. When you open up the dialogue for Maple Rewards for doing the quests, such as like defeating your bosses, um, you can now just click Receive All to obtain all of your Maple Reward Points. And when you load into the cash shop, it'll load them in that way. Or you could do individual select and redeem. So at the bottom, uh, this green button here is going to be the event tab. You can also hotkey it. Okay, now I don't think I touched on this one enough previously in the last one. Uh, but if you hit escape or go to your, your menu, uh, we do have keybinds. I, I believe this is really important to take a look at as a new player because I get asked a lot if there's certain keybinds that you can change or things that players uh, want to change. Um, you can do that all in the keyboard shortcuts here. So you can change a lot of the hotkeys around in here. One tip that I'd like to give, a lot of people forever ago told me to pun harvest on the Y key and I just took it off. Uh, so that way it's a lot easier to interact and say yes to quest lines and things like that when you're having dialogue with somebody. So like for example, the Legion, so we're gonna press Y and then accept the daily quest. Yep, and then we press Y again for yes anyways. And then boom. So having harvest on Y is super useful for speeding through dialogue. If you feel like your setup isn't comfortable for you, you can change change the layout and you can change hotkeys for menus to what's more comfortable for you. You could just clear everything um just clear it boom and you could throw all your abilities too if you open up your skills you could throw your skills on here however you want to do it we're gonna put menu on space right let's just say that's how i want to play the game you you can do that you can change it to however you want um that's most comfortable for you for your your keybind layout and for your menus whatever hotkeys are more most comfortable for you and you can also put you know your macro list stuff on here too i don't have f keys or um function keys over here because 60% keyboard, so Sag. But these are super useful to pun buffs on as well too, if you have a full keyboard, especially your F keys. Um, Cause I know the emotes or the emoticons, you know, are defaulted up on the F keys, but you could take those off and throw some buffs up there. Whatever you want to change, uh, essentially, you have full power to do so. A lot of times where people you know, ask the question or wonder, how can they make the game a little bit more comfortable for themselves? I know a lot of people do say too that they experience like hand cramps for the way that they have their keyboard layout set up. So just mess with it, just fiddle, change around your uh, hotkeys or keybinds and see how that plays for you and see if that's a little bit better. Um, make your make your hand more comfortable so you can play for longer hours. The one thing that I didn't actually cover last time uh, was like a walkthrough or introduction of Hennessy's, the first major town you're, you could really be in um, that a lot of players usually just get attracted to. So I thought we could just do a quick walkthrough of introduction of Hennessy's so it's not too overwhelming and maybe gives some some ideal direction for new players to enter in here. So, and Hennessy's is really iconic too for being a popular town. So when we first enter Hennessy's on the left side, uh, we're going through right here. We do have the, let's get out of the mount too so it's easier to navigate. Uh, we have the Arden Mill portal here, which is for crafting, which I do hope we can go over this in the future as well too. Uh, there's a lot of really important stuff with crafting. We could also talk about androids and some other important topics, but there's the Arden Mill portal. You can also access that um, do the quick move right up here. Quick move will take you everywhere you need to go in Hennessy's, uh, but if you want to be in the area and actually move to it, then it's important to know. Um, event portals do get added up here, like we have Night Troop Portal right here to take you to that. Uh, and then we have the Legion Shop stuff right here, uh, and the Legion NPC, and then the Guild Task Coordinator, um, to access all of that. And then the marketplace, uh, we did visit this last time for reboot players uh, because the general shop at the very end, if we go, oh wait. So starting from the right all the way to the left, cosmetic stuff, and then general store, the super duper important one right in here. We also have a secondary weapon vendor down there. Um, but this merchant, that one you can't access through the, quick portal so you'll need to head down there and then just your old school you know equipment shops down here um street vendor free market so for reboot players pretty much just what's going to be in here for you is the swords keeper and the style stamp trader so you can exchange your 
um, stuff from the PS SP boxes that you don't want um, for the style stuff. Uh, and then the collector, which we already showed earlier that you could just access very easily. Um, and then Storage Keeper 2. So that's the market, and then also the Gachapon machine is usually right here too. And then going farther down to the right, uh, Mushroom Park. My favorite thing about Mushroom Park is if I'm not in, um, and not in one of my other favorite spots, uh, Storage Keeper right here, and then also the uh, Metal NPC right here. Okay, and then we also have the wedding entrance here, which um, access to enter the wedding area. Uh, and then just other NPCs that usually can take, usually can be important for quests, but those are the main things to look for. Oh, and then we also got the Mulung rankings board right here. I don't know what I hotkeyed my legion onto, so we're just going to open up the manage legion through the menu here, but you can hotkey it. And then you can start raid. So I actually don't have it, I didn't have it set up for to start a raid. Let me... So we're going to do assign units. I'm not going to worry about the legion board. I'm just going to... Oh, my bad. Okay, pop it. I didn't expand the board, so... Uh, and then you do start raid. And then we're going to enter the... Nice <laughs> legion. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, you're gonna enter the raid, and you're gonna do your daily quest in here. Um, you can kill the Dragon Ball Blitz, um, but I'm just gonna pop out of it real quick. And get your Legion coins. We've covered Legion last time, and the bonus stats that you can obtain from it, but doing that daily quest will get you Legion coins to get access to the shop and get some really good consumables. Um, that are also extremely important for Reboot. Very similar to the Monster Park shop, just I would say a bit more of a greater importance with the Legion shop. One of the few menus that we didn't go over, I think last time we did kind of mention character stats, um, but this is the character stat menu with your hyper stats, and this gives you an overview of your character and all your stats um, and your bonus abilities. Uh, and then this character menu, if you need to access this, it'll show you your item list, like what's currently equipped, as well as your chair list. You can also get this by double clicking someone. You can also fame or defame them. My friends like to defame me sometimes, it's quite funny. But this menu, you can access your traits, which traits do give you bonuses. This is really important to actually point out. So there are consumable items that you can consume. Um, when you double click them, you're going to gain experience for those traits. And these traits will unlock different perks, such as ignore, elemental resist, max MP, buff duration, ignoring enemies defense. There's some really, really useful stuff in here. Um, as far as I've been told, it's not super game breaking, but I know things like ambition are really important. Um, you have charm as well too. A lot of these just can be useful, um, but you'll access that through the my traits here in your character info. Uh, and then you also have your collection for all your badges as well. So if you delete them from your inventory, you can just grab your badge out. And then your mount tab as well too, where all your mounts are stored. Uh, and your damage skins are all stored in here. We have the goo one. And then pet info too. So if you had a pet equipped, which I don't know if I, I did have a pet. Okay, so we could pop on a pet. Uh, you go to your pet info, it's gonna show you the currently equipped skills on your pet. And there's tabs for, cause you can have up to three pets. You can purchase an item from the cash shop and then do a, just a really quick quest to talk to an NPC to unlock additional pet slots to have up to three. And then water of life to renew them as well, which we'll, we'll show off more pet stuff later on. We'll, we'll go more in depth on pets, pet skills, and how to unlock those slots. Uh, in future editions of the stream. So this is your equipment tab. I have mine hotkeyed on you. It's just convenient for me. Um, and in your equipment tab, this is where your equipment is stored and you can see all of your equipment for your slots, your ring slots, um, your pendant. Um, all of your gear is accessed in here as well as the salon. Now, so the salon is an area where you can store your cosmetics. Now you can get expansions for these slots in the cash shop. And what you can do is you can, if you wanna keep your hairstyle, uh, let's say you're going to roll for a royal coupon for a new hairstyle. You'll do that, but you don't want to lose your hair, right? So you could go in here and you can save it, which I already have the look that exists, so it's saved. Uh, and if you want to change to it, you can just, you know, choose the hair and click uh, change. And boom, change your hair right into the style that you saved. Uh, you can also save the same hairstyle in a different color. Uh, and if you want to get rid of it, all you have to do is click it and click delete and boom. You got rid of it, so now you have more space. You can go back to your previous hairs um, before changing them. So keep this in mind if you are, you know, changing your hairs or you're rolling royal coupons, because it would be a shame if you just lost your hair. 
And the same goes with face as well too. You can save your faces on here. So I already have mine that currently exists saved on this slot. And then this won't matter for players below 200, but you'll have your arcane tab as well too for all your symbols, which would be something to go over later, as well as familiars. So as a little teaser, we will cover familiars in the future. Uh, I know you'd probably be excited about that, Chris, <laughs> to, to mention them, but um, that will be accessible from your equipment slot too, right in here. Uh, and then you also have your cash. Now this is where your cash cosmetics cover up your equipment. Um, so if you want to wear some fancy clothing to cover up that armor of yours, you can definitely do so. And that is all stored here in the cash tab. And then your pets will also be in here. Um, if you have the pet skill for auto MP and cure and HP, that's uh, accessible through the equipment inventory here. Totems also go here on the side. Uh, and then for pets, you can have a pet accessory. Uh, as well as if you have the auto pet skill, um, like for the Adele buff, um, you can only place skills on here that don't have a cooldown. So like for example, Aether Forge and then um, Aether Arms. So right down here, you'll see the cooldown. We can't use that as a pet skill because it has a cooldown. So any of the other buff ones, like, can I just drag it from here? Oh, no, I have to find it. Okay, so Weave Infusion, we can plop that on there and then the pet will auto buff. And then we can stick our MP potions, our HP potions on here and our cures. Uh, and then androids will cover a little bit more in depth later as well too, but this is your equipment tab for your android. Um, you can style them up and make them look super cute. Mine looks a bit cuter than me sometimes, so I hope you had a good time, um, learned something new, or just had a good time watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next stream. Bye!